later in the video, are these the most important jazzy notes to know and play? I have a confession to make. For many years, when younger, I eschewed playing on basic chords like the one we are listening to. Simply put, I was a chord snob who was only interested in playing on jazzy, sophisticated chords with lush extensions. I later learned the error of my ways brutally on a gig. Today, I wish to demonstrate that it is possible to play cool, boppish lines on top of a static chord. Big thanks to Jaro Flores there. Great flute player from La Rioja, Argentina. Okay, so the first phrase. One more time. This is pretty much straight up and down the major blue scale. And the second phrase. Let's start with the last part of that phrase because it's really important how phrases end. A really important stock phrase there. Again, I think that comes from Fred Wesley and the JBs. Now the top of that phrase. Very common thing that to surround the third. You can do so many things just surrounding the third there. Lovely phrase this next phrase. Slowly. Wonderful there. Stock bebop phrase. Root to third. Blue monk. And then from the third to the fifth chromatically. So we have surrounding the third there. Okay. Can you hear that going up to the flat and seventh? Lovely. 
lovely stock language there. From the flat seven down to the fifth chromatically. Then we're surrounding the third again. And then to finish, tenor madness, a little bit of tenor madness there. The whole phrase. Next phrase. That's just the first half. Actually, in the middle of that, something interesting happens. Listen. It's kind of going, circling around the note, the third in this case, again. The third, and then again. So it kind of circles around the third two times. The beginning of that phrase I like a lot. Kind of funky. That's kind of nice to play around the cycle of fifths. Beginning of the phrase. Okay, next phrase. The beginning of that phrase. Love that. The whole phrase. Yeah, jazz is a language. At the beginning of that phrase, I can think of quite a few tunes that go with that. If I had you. Another tune is Chattanooga Choo Choo. Okay. I love those notes. Six, one, two, one. Michael Brecker plays that phrase at the beginning of his solo um, with Freddie Hubbard. He plays this. Something like that. Amazing. Can you hear that? The blues in that, the minor third over the major triad. Yeah, so I love the way that you can play all of these sounds just over the major triad. I'll play that once more slowly. Love that ending as well. Okay, moving on the next phrase. Yeah, it's kind of simple. The first part. Okay.
The next phrase. Yeah, so I really wanted to focus on just playing on one chord in this video and in this series, getting the most juiciest thing just over playing on one chord. So I think it's really important. So here, we've surrounding the major third again. Major third, fifth, six, down to the fifth again. And then, We're surrounding the third again. By the fourth and the flattened third up to the major third. Beautiful there. Can you hear that? The flattened seventh. Or oh. Those are powerful notes. The sixth. Flattened third. Major sixth. Flattened third. Down to the tonic. I'm going to play that a few times and I'm going to put some harmony to it. bar that starts on the fourth great phrase there from that phrase going on Woo. now the whole phrase Remember, these phrases are written down in 12 keys. Last phrase. Woo. That is another stock phrase, really, a stock bebop phrase. I can't remember where I got it from, but I've heard it many times. The beginning of it, this part. up to the major third with the arpeggio then up to the fifth surrounding the third again let me demonstrate that around the cycle the first part of that okay Now, and going on, okay, I like the way that ends, surrounding the tonic. I do hope you enjoyed that breakdown. Let's listen to the flute and sax once more.